kind of my general experience in the NFT part of the crypto world is there are a higher percentage of females and otherwise, but looking at the audience today, you know, not so high. So I'm super interested in what our next panel is going to talk about, and that's how do we get more women into Web3? Let's give them a big hand. Hey, hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm here today with Monica Long, General Manager of Ripple. My name is Rachel Wolfson, I'm a senior reporter with Cointelegraph and I will be um, conducting this fireside chat with Monica entitled Breaking the Boys Club Culture in Crypto, How NFTs Are Bringing Women Into in Web3. So Monica, we'll start off with just, um, you know, getting to know what your impression of the crypto culture is and your own personal experience. This would be such an interesting conversation to open up with the room, but I know the, the time flies here. I, I think, uh, well, very recently, many have probably read headlines about crypto culture coming from you know, CEOs of some of the biggest uh, companies in crypto. And I would say I, I haven't felt that their views necessarily represent the whole industry. I think perception of the crypto industry on the very positive side is that it's an ambitious endeavor. We're all kind of marching or charging uh, against this big grand mission of creating a more inclusive financial future and financial system. And it's a, it's a you know, firestorm of innovation and, and really interesting invention that's very transformative. And that's, there's a reason we call this the Web3 movement. Um, maybe on the not as positive side, there's a perception of you know, not being a shining example of diversity and inclusion or of um, uh, uh, being more kind of anti-government, anti-institution. But my experience, so I've, I've been at Ripple for almost nine years, um, joined in 2013, and, and my experience is far from that, from feeling that it's you know, not a place for women or other underrepresented people. Um, and I think things about Ripple's culture in particular that have not felt that way are everything from uh, you know, putting an emphasis and being deliberate about um, our hiring practices and getting representation at all levels of the company, especially in leadership positions and on our board and also uh, really cultivating and intentionally curating an inclusive culture through things like our, our employee resource groups for women, uh, for being black at Ripple, able at Ripple, pride at Ripple, all the different groups that um, are really, really active. Right. Do you think that Web3 is bringing more diversity into the space? Why or why not? I think it's gotten so much better. I mean, I can remember 2013, 2014, in those days, if I showed up anywhere, I was literally the only woman in the room. Um, and now, I, I can, you can see it. Like, look at the people showing up at NFT NYC. Um, we're definitely seeing more diversity. I do think NFTs have been kind of a, a changing point or an inflection point for that. Um, and I, I think it has to do with crypto kind of reaching the bend in that curve or that inflection point where people really are seeing the use cases behind it, they're making sense, there's things to build, there's work to do. Um, so I think that's bringing a lot more people in. But I mean, the fact remains that, uh, you know, maybe 25% of crypto holders are women and fewer than five, less than 5% of crypto company founders are women, less than 5%. So there's a lot of work to do. Right, in terms of what Ripple is doing to kind of change those numbers, can you kind of give some examples? Yeah, so I mentioned there's, you know, we have an emphasis on uh, seeing better representation at all levels of the company. Being, you know, very self-aware as a company, we still have work to do. It's not, you know, our numbers are not where we want them to be. But as one example, we implement the Rooney Rule. So this was made famous by um, the, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he very intentionally um, interviewed uh, coaches or, or other staff from underrepresented populations. So 
at, for every single position at Ripple, uh, every hiring manager has to interview and put through the process at least two candidates from underrepresented populations. And it's, it's definitely moving the needle. It's making a difference. But the other half of the equation is inclusion. So what's your culture like once people land in your company? If, you're, if you are the only one at the table and you feel that your voice is not, uh, is not embraced, you don't feel safe and comfortable, I think that is really important. And that's been part of our values since day one. One of our values is say it. So we uh, very much embrace a culture of transparency, two-way communication across the employee base and also with leadership. So there's no you know, CEO on some dictator's platform telling us all how it is. Um, there's two-way conversation and people have psychological safety to speak their minds and say what's important to them. Right. Um, let's talk a little bit about the current state of the market. So given the current state of the market, why is it important for women to still get involved in this space? Uh, yeah, we can't, can't ignore the, the stormy clouds above us. I, I've been through a few of these uh, downturns, um, some, some really severe corrections or crashes, um, notably in 2018. I, I kind of remember this story or this movie playing back then. Um, very normal cycles for any economy uh, within an emerging space or emerging tech space like crypto, all the more normal that you're going to see really high highs, low lows. We had a high high last year too. Um, so in some way it's healthy, you know, you, you kind of have this correction. Um, it sheds some of the projects that, and uh, yeah, it sheds some of the activity that's not above board, that's not serious or has real product market fit. Um, so I think it's important to get involved now because crypto is not going away. Web3 is happening 100% and uh, this is going to be a time where builders build. And so I think it's, it's really actually a great time to get involved in the industry. Right. Well, with that being said, do you have any um, suggestions on communities or anywhere like Telegram groups or Discord channels for women to kind of get a, their foot in the door with the crypto and Web3 space? I, I think that community groups are such a fantastic way to dip your toe in, kind of explore in a safe way. And um, so I, I would say I, I like some of the women's groups. Um, it, it feels really welcoming and accessible um, if you know, you're coming in as a woman to the industry. So some of the ones that I'm a part of are my BFF and uh, Unstoppable Women of Web3. Um, Albright, which was, uh, it's a large uh, women's network, um, mainly based in Europe, but they have a sister's NFT group. Um, I think what's cool about some of these Discord channels and, and um, Telegram groups is uh, there's an openness to learn. You can ask anything. I think that's part of the intimidation factor is feeling like you're, you don't, you know, oh, I have a dumb question. It's like, no, everyone's learning. I've been at it for nine years. I mean, Rachel, you've been in the space forever too. And it's impossible to know everything. Um, we're all still learning every day. And so I think that accessibility is important. Yeah, I mean, you make really good points. I've been in the space since 2017 and people think that I know everything because I'm a reporter and I've been in the space for that long, but I don't. And asking those questions are important and not feeling intimidated. You know, you've just got to push through that because if you don't ask the questions, then you'll never learn. Um, Monica, I think it's great, you know, when I interview people like you because I feel comfortable. Maybe it's because, you know, we're both women and I do feel, you know, comfortable speaking with other women. But any advice you would give to other women out there looking to enter the space, just, you know, I know you've mentioned the Discord and the Telegram, but any advice that you would give um, just to help encourage that? Yeah, I, um, so one is just the first kind of baseline of education and learning, Cointelegraph, reading, you know, Rachel's work and her colleagues is a really great source. There's, there's lots of content out there. Um, so I would say learning that way, podcasts are also a really great avenue. Actually, there's some great podcasts that are led by women. Um, I was listening to Down the Rabbit Hole. Uh, there's uh, uh, The Defiant by Camille Russo. There's some great content that will help you s start to learn more about the space and then you can kind of gravitate toward your area of interest. Um, so I think education, I think finding community and building a network that way. 
that a lot of crypto does exist in online channels like uh, Discord, in Telegram, etc., and also in places like this at conferences. So for those who yeah showed up, like this is probably the most valuable way to connect, right? Is um, is coming to conferences or also meetups. There's meetups happening all the time. Right. With that being said, so with crypto, you know, it's one of the guiding principles is decentralization, open source. We're a very open community. So Monica, I wanted to get your thoughts on the, you know, if you think crypto is an industry that can do better than other industries in terms of bringing equity and equality into the space, just given the ideals that crypto is built upon. Heck yes. Like, yes, the ideals, the whole point, actually what attracted me to the space, probably many of us in the room and you, Rachel, too, was the, the promise, this promise of building a financial system that's more democratically designed like the internet, more open like the internet, and that would take the rebalance power from you know, the very few who have tight control over the financial systems and are the profiteers. And frankly, they also make the system much harder for everyone else to use, um, much less on our side, from everything from our identities to our access to fi uh, financial instruments like loans. So reshifting that to the people um, and that, that promise of an inclusive system means working for people like creators, for the unbanked and underbanked, and for women and people of color. I, I read recently a billion women are still exist outside the formal financial system. Women in the US only got access to credit and the ability to put bank accounts under our own names in 1974. So, you know, pe people kind of wonder, well, women aren't as involved in financial services or practices like investing. We were shut out of the system for so long. And so, um, man, what a royal shame it would be if, I mean, crypto won't realize its promise, frankly, if we don't have representation at the table designing the systems. And we've seen this in other areas of tech, like AI and data science, where there's inherent bias in design based on who's designing the systems. So it's like really important. Right. I mean, you, you make an interesting point because when I entered the industry in 2017, you know, I didn't have a financial background. I have a degree in English and political science. Same. I also didn't. Right. And so I think that's important for everyone to know. You know, I had a liberal arts, degrees, arts degree. I didn't know anything about finance. But I've learned so much about traditional finance and decentralized finance ever since entering this space. And um, just my advice that I would give to anybody wanting to, to learn is to talk to people because I'm self-educated when it comes to cryptocurrency and blockchain. I've only educated myself by speaking with people like Monica, um, like people I meet at events and asking them the tough questions. And from that, I've learned so much about finance. Um, so I just want to encourage everyone, you know, if you see Monica or anybody else that you admire in this space after this panel, go up and talk to them, ask them the hard questions. You'll be surprised by how much you can learn in a short amount of time when it comes to this industry and also about traditional finance because it, it, it relates. It's also, it's so early that ideas are fluid and like these concepts are still kind of taking shape and being molded. So, I mean, certainly even when someone purports, you know, they have a lot of confidence, you think they're the expert, like the, the ideas are changing. So it's like all a big conversation we're having. Right. But I think it's important for us to end on this note. Like, although we are in a bear market right now, it's crypto winter, Monica, we still need to encourage women to continue to get involved in the space because I see, you know, some people feel discouraged right now and they're like, oh, you know, maybe this isn't the space for me or maybe, you know, everything's going to zero. And that's just, it's not true. Now is the time that we need women to come in and build because we need that diversity. Totally. Yeah, I, plus, big plus one to what Rachel said. Um, it's, it, it is like never a better time to get involved. Wonderful. Um, we have about a minute left. Monica, should we take a question from an audience member in the last minute? Sure. Maybe if, does anybody have a quick question to ask us? If not, okay.
And I think that's where some of these groups, like these Discord channels, um, the My BFF group, I mentioned Unstoppable Women of Web3, there's um, there's also very various DAOs that are all female focused, like uh, unicorn and non-binary pe people focused. And it, it's about connecting with other, once you get in a room and we connect on, oh, I don't know anything, like I don't manage my own finances, this is really scary. Once you get that connection, you can kind of uh, put down your guard and start learning. I agree. Connect with people. That's the best way to get involved. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks guys. Rachel. All right. yeah, Give me a big Monica. hand. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Monica.